Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video we're looking at another land vehicle and this one is called the Calico Crew Scout Rover which is this lovely thing right here. So this is a small block rover that features a handful of guns, a survival kit to respawn on and a very fancy design. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, there it is. This thing is only 391 small blocks, featuring no mods, no DLC packs, and no scripts. So we'll give this a thumbs up, we'll move all the way around to the very front, we'll do a quick look around the outside, then we'll play around on planet Pertan, because it's got the perfect ramps in the form of rocks. At the very front here, this is what we get. So front and centre, we've got an air vent to suck an auction from the surrounding areas to fill in our tanks, and right above there, we can see a fighter cockpit to drive this thing around with a spotlight on the left and right hand side to light up the darkness. If you were to look in the gap between these, we do have some Gatling guns to blast your enemies straight forwards. And if I was to peek all the way up, we do have a turret just in case you want a automated defense. Moving down in front of the cockpit, we do have a spotlight and hydrant thruster set up, which have been surrounded by some blast or edge blocks, which is very useful if you slam into something you don't really want to do too much damage to the light steel blocks. As we move around the side here, what we're going to see is a bunch of orange and grey wheels. And we'll see some fancy glass blocks just to hold in some of the interiors. Now at first, I thought this was an interior that you'd go into, but unfortunately you can't jam your character inside. So you just have to reach from over here to access the survival kits, and when you respawn, you'll simply be plopped on top of it. Yes, we do have a hydrogen tank inside here, because we do have thrusters underneath this, because it can sort of fly. But I'll show you that a bit later. As we move along towards the back here, we will see another section inside with a simple passenger chair to carry a friend along on your journey, and we can see a parachute hatch right beside it. Moving out of here and coming around to the very back, this is what we get. We've got another spotlight, and we've got a camera to reverse this thing up, an access point for the turret at the top there with a connector to dock this thing up, load it up with hydrogen, or to unload anything you've collected. Dropping down below our connector, two more hydrogen thrusters give us a nice boost along the surface, and of course when we use flight mode, and a few more blaster edge blocks at the back here, just in case you reverse and bump into something. Coming down and underneath, now this is what I meant by the vehicle can sort of fly, we've got a bunch of hydrogen thrusters under here, which is enough when we hold spacebar to take off and go at some pretty good speeds actually. Yes, we can see more hydrogen tanks along the side there, a load of conveyors linking everything up in the middle there, and that is the very front where the blast or edge block is sitting. If we were to come up and above, we'll see our fancy glass on both sides, and we can see both of our Gatling guns and both the spotlights. Just behind our cockpit, we do have an ore detector and an antenna block behind some windows, so we can use this to go off and find ore patches if you want to. Then moving towards the back there, even more window blocks covering up some conveyors, and there is our turret. So what we're going to do is just quickly grab hold of my character, walk around to the side, and I'll show you what I mean by the survival kit. So just coming over here and crouching, we can access the survival kit by standing on the wheel, which is all good, but unfortunately we can't cram ourselves inside there because the gap won't allow us. Coming around here and moving towards the back, getting into the orange seat, which we can do from the ground. We can now just get into here and we can get a good view sort of around us. We get a fantastic view at the front there, a limited view at the side and the back, and then looking up, all we can see is conveyors. Coming out of that and moving around to the very front, getting into our fighter cockpit, bringing up the HUD, this is what we get. So number one is to fire our Gatling guns, which are right next to our cockpit, with number two being manual control for our brakes, so we don't have to press P and disconnect any kind of trailer or anything else we're attached onto. Number three and number four is for our batteries to auto or recharge, with number five being a hydrogen engine on and off, in case we need the additional power. Number six is our hydrogen thrusters, and this is what I meant by the ship can sort of fly. So we can lift off from the ground, we can move forwards, we can move backwards, not left and right. So we can use this to go over a cliff, or maybe over a large canyon, just in case we don't trust the vehicle enough to make it in one piece if you were to do a big jump. So yeah, just turning that off and pressing number 7, this is manual control over our Gatling gun. And then number 8 is to view the camera straight behind us, with number 9 being manual control over our parachutes. On tab number 2 we've got our Gatling guns once again for consistency. Then a bunch of controls for our wheels. 
Now you don't really need to set up these because these are literally everything with our high offset, our power and everything else. The only thing I did change up was our power from 5% to 10% because I did find it was a little bit close to the ground and needs to be raised up to try and avoid damaging the bottom blocks. Anyway, coming to tab number 3, once again our Gatling guns to fire straight forwards, our high offset to raise and lower it. We then got our gyroscopes to raise and lower the power, our O2H2 generator on and off. Number 7 is for our projector for a quick little recharge, so just coming out of here and removing a block. Then pressing number 7, it'll then fill in the gap so we know where to repair up and it just makes everything a lot easier. Number 8 is to stockpile our hydrant tanks on and off to quickly refill them up from a base. And number 4, 5 and 6 is empty, so now what we can do is drive this thing around. So moving forwards, this is what we get. We've got some great speeds and we are an extremely solid land vehicle. Any kind of lumps or jumps, this thing's going to land very flat and very softly. So far during my testing, apart from trying to do a backflip, it's been a very solid vehicle overall. And there is the wreckage of where I attempted the backflip and failed. Yes, it's coming all the way over here because I've learned nothing. We're going to do a quick little jump and once again, backflip. There we go. And we'll do a nice soft landing. Well, I'll say a soft landing. We did bounce quite hard there. But there we go, we do land very nicely. Coming to a stop, just by holding spacebar. There we go, now gonna do a tight turn. And this is what we get. This is usually where a lot of vehicles start to fail. When you get faster while turning hard, they tend to flip over. And we seem to be doing a very good job at not flipping over. So now what we can do for one final test is not bump into a tree, but we're going to activate our thrusters and now we're going to take off into the sky and we're simply going to drop it down from quite a height. But yes, there isn't too much else to talk about with this vehicle. It's very self-explanatory with what's going on with it and how well it's been designed. It does look fantastic and it does have all the things you need to survive in survival mode. As for that, we're just going to turn them off and now we're going to come back down to the ground. I will lower the wheel power just a little bit back to its default state so that should help lower the impact of it and we'll see how well this goes. So here we go we're now at maximum speed at 104 meters per second should be a fairly flat terrain below us and we're coming down very straight and here we go. Wow okay Clang was very angry with that not too sure what happened but I swear we destroyed something. Yes, we did destroy a few blocks, but we are still perfectly fine to drive this thing around. Just raising this all the way back up to 10% power. We still seem to be perfectly fine. So yes, like I said, that is it for this vehicle. There will be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around for it yourself. I highly recommend you do because it is a fantastic little land vehicle and does have everything you need to survive in survival mode. So thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.